Alright, this is it. Welcome to the last part of Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 4, and welcome to the last part of the entire series. Um, 12-7 starts off pretty basic. You have, uh, a bunch of carrots you can get here. Um, this early part could, uh, give you some trouble because there are three enemies that are gonna be here. There's, a uh, Gossamer that's gonna drop down, there's Elmer Fudd, and then there's a dog that you are gonna have to worry about. And then, uh, what I'm trying to do here is just get to all the easy ones first, and then... Yeah, see, I think what I'm doing here is that I had, uh, 10 carrots, or I was getting to 10 carrots, so might as well just take out whoever I can. So I think that next level is the one with the dog. But, uh, here I'm just trying to take out whoever I can and just get to wherever. Uh, this stage is actually kind of tricky because you do have to worry about a bunch of trampolines, a bunch of conveyor belts, and you have to drop down to the right spots. Otherwise, you could end up in a lot of trouble. And, um... Yeah, with this first part, you do have to worry about a lot of enemies early on, and, uh... You can use the pipes to, uh, throw them off, and... You did see me use the doors to throw them off, too. And that was just me, uh, wasting a bunch of time and trying to... Throw off some more enemies. But right now, I feel like I should give my thoughts on the entire series as a whole. I really like the, uh, different gameplay that, uh, the first game and the second game did offer. I mean, it was a puzzle game for what it was worth, and, you know, some people like it, some people hate it, but personally, this was something I did enjoy, and, uh, you know, playing through all these games, I mean, it was kind of fun at times, and then it was also kind of boring at other times, and, uh, I did learn this is definitely not a game that you should try and complete in, uh, in one setting, and I'd, this is definitely not something you should try and complete all at once, and, um, if it's something you, uh, want to spread out over a few months, or over the course of a few months, or maybe even spend a year on the entire series, then, you know what, by all means, go ahead. And, uh, what I did enjoy about this or about this series was uh just the different gameplay, the different kind of gimmicks and how they expected you to adapt to uh different situations. I mean I think I said uh, in a previous video that the inability to jump is what broke the game for a lot of people and you know I can kinda see where that was or where that came from but I can also see that would have made the games an awful easy a awful lot easier than they should be. And, uh... Yeah, and then that's this one gossamer getting the jump on me. Which is unfortunate, but... Good thing we have that health bar. And I did find this game to be... Probably number three compared to... Or in the entire series. I think I'd, uh... Actually go with two as my personal favorite. And, uh... The reason for that was that was just the one I played the most when I was little. I mean, I did have, uh the first one for Game Boy. I mean, obviously that was a lot different, because, you know, it wasn't Game Boy. And, um... And then we did, uh... play the NES one. At times I did play it, I didn't end up beating it. So, uh... You know, that was fun, too. And see, what I need to do here is just, uh, get to some more stuff. Fortunately, I do have more than enough weapons to work with. If I ever run into trouble again. And let's just get rid of you while we can. And also, uh... See, with this part, you do want to use the ropes and, uh... Get to this other door. I think this one should be... Nah, I guess it's not a key. I guess, uh, what you do have to worry about here is that... It is pretty easy to, uh miss your spots and then end up going somewhere where you don't want to go when there's a door right above you or right next to you or something like that. Because uh, in some of these areas there's only one way to get to the particular doors. And uh... That's just uh, something that is where you have to go based off a of trial and error and then you learn that as the game goes on. Or as you uh, get better with the level. And just like before, the abrupt cuts are, uh, more just me either wasting time or not getting anywhere. 
Yeah, that was stuff you don't really want to see. But now that we've got number six, let's see, what I have to do is actually go up. So I have to do that by taking this pipe. And then, uh, all the remaining keys should be at the top floor. So let's just go ahead and uh, clean this stuff up. And then, um, see, just one more pipe ride. And I think I gotta take one more here. Well, I guess it's not a ride. Let's see, I think this should be either a... Nah, I guess this is the last key. Yeah, I think right here is where they're gonna start having the uh, last key be in uh, one of two treasure chests. They actually do do that quite a bit in this next stage, too. Anyway, with this final stage, what you do have to worry about is, uh, a lot of the keys are gonna be really difficult to get, and, uh, the biggest reason for that is that, uh, a lot of them are hidden in spots where there's only one specific way to get there, and, um, this can be a pretty tedious stage. Now, and by the way, I forgot this first key at least five times during different runs. So just thought you ought to know. Because it's something that's actually really easy to forget about and then, you know, you have to backtrack all the way to the beginning just to get it. Not really that much fun. Also here, uh, you do get your option of three carrots or one carrot. And um, I had to think about that one for a little bit. I think what I'm trying to do is just gather up as many carrots as I can, because there are a ton of enemies here, and I just might as well take out whoever I can. And um, I think these are the only two I end up getting. Now that would have made things a lot easier, because I know in one other run I actually did manage to kill all the enemies. But at the end of the day I also didn't really solve anything, because it took me like 11 minutes of getting lost, and that was just a failed take. And, um, I am actually talking a lot more about this stage because it is actually really difficult to solve. And, um, actually is something that requires a lot of trial and error, also a lot of studying the maps, just to, uh, make sure you know where you're going. And, uh, right here I'm just trying to figure out where to go. Because you have to take this pipe and, uh, go along the conveyor belt in order to get to one of the other keys. And that's just uh, one of the many things you are going to have to do in this level. And uh, when you see those jump cuts, that's just me backtracking over and over again because you have to go to that specific spot in order to get anywhere. And I don't know how that somehow missed, he just jumped over it somehow. So I just have to go all the way back and get it. Yes, yeah, so I don't really know how that happened, but let's just move on. And, uh, there is gonna be a dog there. I think I'm gonna dispose of him with, uh, the balloon. Or I think I'm gonna do something. I'm not sure what, though. Yeah, I mean, I did record this a while ago. Yeah, that would make the most sense. And that's just me getting lost again. So it turned out I had to take this pipe in order to, uh, get to one of the other keys. And, uh... Let's see, for this part, it's, uh, pretty tricky, because there are gonna be enemies everywhere. And, um, I think what you have to do is just make sure you bait them all out in different spots, because you really don't want to have more than one enemy in that particular area. And, uh, one lengthy backtrack later. And, um, right here, I gotta go up, and then there I'm just waiting for the... Wait to drop on Elmer Fudd. Well, that was easy. And, um, at least, uh, it is actually easier if you, uh, get to all the ones on the left first. I mean, obviously, you do have to make adjustments. Here, you have to, uh, drop down to specific locations. And, um, here you are gonna end up getting one key. So, let's see, right now we're up to four, and what I have to do is, uh, 
drop down and do this all over again. So I'll just see you when I'm done. Alright, here I'm dropping down and going to the right this time. And, uh, let's see, with this, you have to drop to the conveyor belt and then take the pipe up in order to get to this specific set of keys. And let's see, this one would be a carrot. Well, at least I get my health back. Not that I can do anything with this invincibility. But at the end of the day, at least I got my health back. So let's see, this is number five. So what I have to do is, uh, now all those last keys are going to be on the top right. So how I need to get to those is, uh, well, first I need to jump up here. And, um, when I'm jumping up here, well, I gotta dispose of this dog now. And, um, jumping up here is actually pretty dangerous if you do have a lot of those gossamers running around because they are gonna be there and, unfortunately, they're not gonna leave you alone if you're in that spot, so you do have to draw them out and then, uh, go to different spots. See here, I'm just trying to figure out where to go. Uh, it turns out to uh, get to that other door, you have to not get trapped like that. But uh, it turns out what you have to do is uh, go all the way to the right. And you do have to time it specifically if you uh, don't have any way of killing the dog. And uh, yeah, that's the one way to get to uh, this key is that you have to jump up and then go to the pipe or land on the pipe to the right. And see, I gotta do this all over again here. So here I'm just uh, waiting to see where the dog is. And then this time I'm actually gonna take the rope. Or at least I got rid of you. And that turns out I wasn't supposed to drop down. Instead, what I gotta do here is take the pipe and then use the door. And then when that's done, Turns out I gotta backtrack all over again. So you can see why this gets a little tedious. So let's just get to it. And uh, just in case you're wondering, there's a balloon here. But that is the end of World 12. So on to the final level. This is the treasure room. This is gonna be the last level of the game. And it is going to be a final boss fight with Taz. I'm pretty sure I revealed this in uh, the first video of World 12, but... The concept is the same as in uh, the third one. Um, he's uh, occasionally shoot tornadoes at you, and... Uh, he's occasionally gonna spin at you. And uh, the easy way to handle this is to make sure you do keep him close to you so that he does take the ladders, he does take the pipes. Because you don't want him catching you off guard with those tornadoes. And uh, this is where they start introducing having both treasure chests fake. And the worst part about that is uh, the door closes implying you never went in. So that's just something that was uh, mildly irritating to deal with, but at the end of the day it really was not that big a problem. And um, let's see, what I'm trying to do here is just... Uh, go all the way, cover everything on the left, and then uh, cover everything on the right, and then go back to the top. And here I'm just trying to cover everything on the right. You do have to take this trampoline. And uh, let's see, what I'm trying to do here is just make sure he's close enough that he uh, wants to actually chase me directly instead of using his tornado. And that's a strategy I did end up using here. And see, he does uh, also shoot those things. And here you have to actually use that trampoline in order to uh, get to that conveyor belt and get to these set of keys. These are actually going to be the last set of keys. And another one of those ones where both of them were fake. And uh, just like the second one I am trying to use, uh, or the second game, I am trying to use the doors to slow them down. And not really sure if this was a good idea. Then yes, there is even one where, or one room where uh, the only treasure in there is fake. And here I gotta use the doors to my advantage. Let's see, almost there. And I somehow ended up passing through without getting hurt. I mean, if it was gonna be a problem, I could have just uh, dropped down and tried again from somewhere else. 
Let's see, this should be the last one. Yep, this is the last one, so let's get to the exit and finish this thing. I'm just going to uh, take the pipes down. That's the easy way. Oh, with that, uh, just get in the door and this is over. Yep, it's all over. That's the end of Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 4, and the entire Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle series. So let's just enjoy the ending. And for some reason, Lola Bunny's there. The only question is, who the hell does she keep pissing off in order to end up trapped in that treasure box in God knows where? But this is a game about a cartoon character that makes no sense, so... I mean, a game that makes no sense about a cartoon character that makes no sense. Yeah. But anyway, uh... Since Bug still calls it Carrot Castle... And his journey is done, and you know what, so's mine. And you know what, thanks for us uh, sticking by for the entire series, and uh... Most importantly, thank you guys for watching. You know what, uh, let's see, I'll be back, uh, pretty soon with another game. And, um, yeah, that is the end of the entire Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle series. I'll see you soon.